if you're thinking about buying a school bus for conversion uh, you need to watch this video because I'm going to explain to you some things that will help you in your plans and purchasing and what may you may encounter on trying to get them tagged insured and registered depending on what state you live in so stick around and we'll get into that a little more all right first thing you need to check on is check your regulations with your state and this is hard to find sometimes but to see if you can tag a bus with it still being a yellow in color or if the bus is going to need painted we're gonna step inside here a minute because of the wind but something i wasn't expecting when i bought this bus is what i had in mind I was just going ahead and putting the insurance on it tag it and run it a while and then i might paint it later or whatever well i started doing some research on it and found that in virginia any vehicle that has the capacity of 15 persons or more um cannot be yellow in color unless it's used in school transportation um i think you can use it for private or public schools in yellow uh or to transport the elderly there was some criteria there that it had to meet in order to be yellow in color you cannot tag it for personal use and leave it yellow if it if it is 15 passengers or more now you might say which my thought was well i'll remove some of the seats and get the capacity down to 15 passengers well i talked to a state trooper about that and they said that federal regulations says that and, it, and you'll see right here that this bus right there has capacity of 66 persons so that can only be changed if you reconfigure the bus into another configuration and get the bus titled as a reconstructed title so in order to do that you'd have to make all your changes and you would have to have a state trooper come out and inspect the vehicle and re-register it whether you was going to make a flatbed out of it say a box truck or you know whatever you want rv whatever you're going to reconfigure it as so that's the only way you can get by uh not painting it yellow or not painting it that's why i don't know why you could leave it yellow reasons being i figure is just so that kidnapping situations that way somebody can't pull up and impersonate in the school bus and pick up kids you know it needs to be painted a different color i understand that but expect that to be a lot of work some states does not have that requirement so if you're going by a school bus check into the color um thing in the state that you live in now that we've discovered that the, the bus has to be painted um next you need to find you an insurance company the the biggest hassle i had in this whole process was getting insurance on the bus i was afraid tagging it was going to be the problem but no that wasn't the problem so i decided we was off from school one day for snow i said i'm going to go over to the insurance office get insurance on it go up and get my tags be ready to run it i already had the bus painted at this point hadn't hadn't checked any farther so i went over to the insurance office state farm local agency went in there and i told them what i was wanting and they was like we can't do that and um we can't insure a bus and i said even for private use and they said no not that we know of they couldn't find out anything otherwise i said so if i can get it retitled and reconfigured as a truck uh can you and they said yeah we can then so i had to decide what to do uh went up to dmv and talked to them found out the process of getting it uh reconfigured and having the inspections done on it and all that which was going to be a big deal you have to submit paperwork submit fees 
Uh, they schedule a time to come look at it once all the work's completed and everything. That was going to be a big deal. So I, I, I checked around with a couple different insurance companies. Nobody would touch insuring a school bus. So I was sitting there one day uh, on Facebook. I had posted a picture of the bus in a group. Yeah, I think it's, it was the International um, 4700, 4900 uh, truck group. And there was somebody commented on there. And I apologize, can't remember their name right now because they I don't know if they watched the videos or not. But they had some of these buses. So I proceeded to ask him what they, how they had them insured. So what he said, he said, I've got several. I think he maybe had three buses. Uh, two of them was over 25 years old. And he said, I've got insurance on them through Hagerty Insurance, which is, a, which is an antique vehicle insurer. The other one, he had a private, I think he called it a private commercial insurance through Progressive because it did not meet the antique insurance criteria because of the age. Mine met it within the year. Uh, it was right dead on almost. So um, I thanked him. That tickled me to death. I immediately went and called Haggerty. I told him what I had. Um, they were super great to work with. They insured the bus without any problems. Of course, you're kind of limited to your use as an antique vehicle, you know, having it on antique vehicle insurance. But my plans for the bus, uh, as of right now, it was going to work out fine for me. So that's what I did. It's an affordable rate and everything. But the big thing before you purchase a bus, get the VIN number. Um, Call around, check on getting insurance before you buy it. That's, that's the big one. Next is tags. Um, how are you going to tag it? All right, I had the option of tagging it as an RV. Well, what that was going to entail, which really with the insurance I had, that wouldn't be the best way to do it. Um, but what that was going to entail was if I wanted to tag it as an RV, you had to do all the work. You have to keep receipts. Now, this is in Virginia. It may be different other places, but in Virginia, you have to keep all the receipts of the work you've spent on it. Um, you have a trooper come out and look at it. Then you have to submit your cost, the cost of the bus, plus the cost of the transformation, basically just so you can get taxed on it, sales tax and then you get a reconstructed title as an RV. I ain't gonna do that, I ain't gonna do that. So, next thing you could tag it with private tags um, or you could tag it with antique tags. So, I read the description on the antique tags and you can run a vehicle to and from car shows, you can run them to garages to get worked on you can run them after you've performed work on them to, to, to test them. You can drive them to car, you know, at car shows anywhere in the country, basically. Or for the occasional pleasure driving. So that's kind of where uh, it broadens the area a little bit on what you can use an antique vehicle for as far as antique tags. It's a one-time fee on the tags. And basically, you know, this is not being used for any kind of business. It's not being used to drive back and forth to work. Uh, I mean, it's just for me to get out in and drive it because this was the school bus I rode. This was the bus that I had planned on buying or trying to buy from the time I was a young kid, a young teenager. I always wanted it. And uh, so anytime I get out and driving it, it's, it's, an, it's a pleasure drive for me. I enjoy it. I like it. Um, I've said before, I don't like, you know, don't care about fishing boats or, you know, even getting out and going four wheel and that type thing. This is what I like. These, these buses and old trucks and things. So I felt like that fit the, the bill for me. It was going to be cheaper. Um, the tags are really nice. They're black and white, black tag with white lettering and uh, look good on the vehicle. And for the uses, I'm... Um, for what I'm using it for now, that fit perfectly. So to 
depending on what you're going to do with the bus, there's different options out there for tags. The state you live in also might make a difference because antique tags in some states may not have that exception of the occasional pleasure driving. If it doesn't, I don't know that I would go that route. Now for me, the simplest part of this process was choosing the bus. For you all, that's probably not the case. You're gonna be looking at buses that are primarily automatics. You can find some straight shifts like these, both buses we have are. Uh, my preference is a straight shift. That's just cause of what I like. Nothing wrong with an automatic. Uh, you're gonna look at different body styles. This is the Thomas body. They have Bluebird, Wayne, Carpenter, all that type of stuff, little different body shapes and styles. Uh, you're gonna be looking at internationals, Freightliners, used to be some GMCs back in the day, and Chevrolet buses, Fords even, on some of the older stuff. Most newer buses have been internationals and Freightliner chassis, or Bluebird, Bluebird makes their own bus now. Um, you'll have to decide if you want a conventional style or a, like a, they call them a pusher bus or a flat nose bus, um, which was not even a, something I would consider myself. Some people like them though. Uh, that's what they like because you do have a little more space in the, in the, in the footprint of the bus. You get a little more space than you do with the conventional style body. The next thing you might want to look at is mileage. This bus currently has 144,718 miles. The bus mom and dad purchased had 110,000 miles on it. That is rare. You will hardly ever find any with this kind of mileage on it and to be this good a shape. Um, but you need to kind of set a limit. Like I don't want a bus over 200,000 miles or I don't want one with over 150,000 miles. And even in that mileage range, depending on how they've been maintained, how they've been drove, and um, a lot of different factors play into that as to far as the condition of the bus, uh, whether they've, they've got rust on them from salty areas, where the roads have been salted and treated, um, get up under the bus and look over it good. Uh, a lot of stuff consider mechanically when you're buying a school bus. So, for me, if you was going to buy one for a camper, you you want one that's good and sound, that don't have much rust. A lot of the mechanical stuff can be fixed if you get the bus for the right price. Um, you don't want any major damage to them. You want a good engine and things, but you can get rebuilt transmissions. You can get rebuilt engines. Uh, you know... Um, a lot of that stuff I didn't have to consider because I was wanting this bus. This was the only one I wanted. And I knew its history from the time it was new until it was sold. So I felt comfortable with the purchase I made. I feel like it's been a good purchase. And I have drove it about 300 miles since I've had it and um, has performed well. Next thing we're going to look at is tires. Now, as you can see, this bus has good tread. Good tires, these are they're virgin cases, they uh, casings, they have not been recapped. You don't want to run recaps on the front. Me personally don't, I think, I don't know what the laws are. I know on a school bus you can't. I think you might be able to on a truck. But what you have to look at too is the age of the tire. These tires are an 09, so they're getting pretty old. Um, you can tell they're starting to crack a little bit on the sidewalls. So basically, these tires are really are going to need replaced soon. Um, I wouldn't want to hit the interstate and say head towards Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg in it simply because of the tires. The running gears of the bus wouldn't worry about it a bit, but I wouldn't want to blow out. Now these rear tires, they have been recapped. I don't worry about running recaps on the rear. The tread is good, but again, the casings have got some age on them. If you're buying used trucks, medium duty trucks, that's another thing you need to look at is the age of the tire, not necessarily the condition of the tire. Now here's a big factor for me, and it may not be for other people. 
I did not want a electronically controlled engine. Just like when buying my international truck, I really wanted to stay away from the DT-466E, which had a lot of electronics and sensors and things on it. Even though it's pre-emission engine, it still has a lot of sensors and stuff on it. So what you can look at is if it has this mechanical injection pump uh, that pumps your fuel to your injectors that distributes your fuel, that is a mechanical engine. I can work on a mechanical engine for the most part. I can troubleshoot a mechanical engine. I don't have to have a computers or no codes or all that type of stuff. They're a little more straightforward. If you got a good parts manual, uh, maintenance manual, you can figure these things out if you're mechanically minded at all. A few things to check is look in your coolant. Make sure your coolant looks good. It's got a good clear color that it doesn't look oily or milky to where that might be the oil. Um, and coolant is mixing because of like cylinder wall damage, liners in the, you know, liner seals leaking, uh, oil cooler, that's an oil cooler there that can get holes inside of it and mix your coolant with your oil and vice versa. You want to check your oil, make sure your oil don't have coolant in it. One thing you can do is pull the plug on the bottom of the engine on your oil drain pan if the engine hasn't been started in a while uh, drain a little bit out and see if it's got any kind of coolant in it because the water will settle to the bottom could have sweat also from being parked for a while might get a little bit of water if you get just pure water i wouldn't worry about it antifreeze you're gonna have to kind of investigate further uh, check for leaks around your manifolds Make sure you don't have manifold gasket leaks. That will cause a loss of power on a turbo engine and can be a fairly costly expense to replace a manifold or manifold gaskets because you run into trouble getting the bolts out of them. And if you break a bolt out and it has to be drilled out and things, you run into high labor cost. Now underneath the bus, you wanna look at your frame rails, your air tanks, these all have quite a bit of surface rust on it. Bus 44 had very minimal surface rust. And the issue you run into is the seat bolts have nuts on them underneath. So the heads of the nuts on these are kind of rusted. So if you're going to remove the seats, this one has been a lot more difficult to get the seats out of than it has 44 because I've had to cut the bolt heads off of uh, these on a lot of them because the wrench won't hold. Another thing, check your universal joints for slack. Um, see if the bus has been greased good. Check your carrier bearings for slack. Look in your inspection holes on your brakes and check your brake shoes and make sure they're good because that again can be a pretty big expense if you're going to have to put brakes on it right away. One more thing you might want to check is this probably wouldn't be a a definite no factor but check you your batteries make sure your batteries are a decent age um in pretty good shape because you're probably looking at close to 300 dollars to replace two batteries uh commercial batteries well this video has been a little different than what i normally do um but i've had several people comment since we've bought these buses you know saying they might be looking at one or interested in one or things and I've actually uh, think that people seeing these running has inspired a few more to buy them uh, here locally even. Um, they sold one just the other day somebody's wanting to convert into a schoolie. So I just wanted to give you a few things to consider for just running out and buying one because I've seen so many of these buses on uh, Facebook Marketplace and things where that uh, People have bought them, they've started getting the insides of them or started doing a remodel and they just quit part of the way through and I don't know why, but there's a reason and I wonder if it's partially because of the painting situation and getting them tagged, if it's because of the insurance, they could get insurance on them or what the scenario is, I, I would like to know the backstory on why those are for sale and they've not been completed and, I, and, it, and they're several. You get on there and look sometime, you'll see a bunch. If I was you, I wouldn't buy one that has been partially done because there's a reason those people stop most likely. But 
I hope this helps everybody. I uh, appreciate everybody watching. I, if, if there's more videos I could do like this to help you, whether it's on buying used equipment or tractors or whatever, uh, leave it in the comments. Um, I'm not the best speaker or the best thinker or the best explainer, but I'll do the best I can, that I possibly can, um, to help you out. If you have any more questions on the, the buses, or if you're looking at one, you're thinking about buying and want to send me some pictures of it on email or anything, um, feel free to do that and I will help guide you uh, what I can. But ultimately, that would be your decision when that time comes uh, as far as making the final purchase. But if you will, please like, subscribe, comment, and um, we will catch you on the next one.